Ice cold, baby. I told you, I'm ice cold. Ice cold. Things that can happen in your relationship that, that are detrimental. Um, some of the guys mentioned cheating or some of uh, lack of communication on a college campus. Um, if you're only a person they text, they can't even pick up the phone. Every time you try to reach them, it goes to voicemail, right? Um, that every time that you're going out to hang out, as always, they want you to pay the bill, okay? So these are some of the costs that you would incur as a college student, all right? Some of the benefits, though, on a college campus, as Michael mentioned earlier, is the ability to listen. You guys should know that not everyone here has jobs, and if you do have a job, you'd be lucky if it's a $10 an hour job. You guys are college students. So to expect that your date takes you out and spends $50 on dinner and drinks, that's gonna cut into all the other things that they have to take care of for the week or for the month. So being able to look at some of the other benefits like sharing time together, spending time together, talking about family, um, investing in each other's future. Everyone's majoring in something here. So it's questions like, well, what do you plan on doing when you graduate? But how do you plan on getting there? Well, let me sit down with you and help you develop some goals and some real objectives. Has anybody in this room that's been in a relationship helped your, par your partner with their goals and their dreams? Like you've sat down with them and you've written those things out? Some of you have. That's how you begin to invest in somebody else that you're in a relationship with on a college campus. You don't have the monies to be able to fly to Turks and Caicos for the weekend. <laughs> it's just not there yet, right? So what things can you do that's inexpensive? And don't feel like because these special holidays come across like Christmas that you have to go broke using your student loan money to try to get gifts for your significant other when you know that you've got rent coming up in January when you come back from break. So being realistic, looking at the costs, and then looking at the benefits, which one weighs more. And if, if it's more beneficial for you to be in that relationship, then you're in a good one. But like the ladies mentioned earlier, there is no relationship that's perfect. You're not going to find a 10. There is no 10. You're not a 10. In your mind, you can feel as if you're a great person, but a 10 is perfection. Who's so perfect? We're going to have, we're gonna have the, 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 the non-perfection person. No, nobody's perfect. And so if you go into a relationship thinking that, you know, this person is, is perfect, it's not going to happen. I think in Steve Harvey's book, he talks about the 80-20 principle, right? But before Steve Harvey, it's called Patero. The gentleman who created this principle is the Patero principle, the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule just says that, that in 80% of the, the work that you do sometimes take place in 20% of the time remaining. And if you look at relationships, it's kind of similar in the sense that all of what you want in a relationship that's on your checklist, I want A, B, C, D, all the way through Z, I might not get it. But which one of those things are more important than having? Okay? So I hope I was able to break that down just a little bit more. Brother Murphy. 